feet during the game. We want to be at your feet at work. God, when we're talking to our neighbors, Lord, God, we, it's a good place to be, Lord. We, we do love you, God. Ask for your help today. I, I, I ask that you would help to motivate us, God, toward love and good deeds, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we've been talking about the Bema judgment, which is the judgment seat of Christ for believers. Um, there, are, there is another judgment, the great white throne judgment. This is not, we're not talking about that judgment. This is a judgment for believers. We learned, we, we took a look at Romans 14 last week. I greatly enjoyed the study of Romans 14. And, and uh, today we're going to look at 1 Corinthians 3.10. And uh, next week we will look at 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 10. We... We learned importantly that the beam of judgment, you know, and get a, get a picture of this here, you know, you know, think of a couple thousand years ago, you know, in the city of Corinth, there's a, there's a platform, a concrete platform, or a, a made out of stone, excuse me, and in the city of Corinth, and that's where judgments are made, um, you know, basically the court would convene. But, but more, I think more relevant to the, to the subject of the Bema judgment or the Christian's judgment is that's where, when there was athletic games, at, at that judgment, that's where rewards were given. Oftentimes, in, you know, if somebody, if somebody won an athletic event, they would be awarded at this judgment which is really a, or at the Bema seat, which was a, really a good example of what we see in scriptures about the Bema judgment, that, it's a, that it does not determine punishment or loss of salvation, because we know we're saved by grace through faith. Um, but we also know that there's much at stake, because it does deal with the gaining and loss of rewards. And so as a church here, and, and what my, my role is here, and Pastor Jack's role is, and what all of our roles are here as members of the body, is to push each other, to lovingly nudge each other, toward a life of good works. And we're going to see some cool things in 1 Corinthians 3 here today. Um, we see in Romans 14, that's verse 12, so that each of us, each believer, will give an account of himself to God. Okay, so... We're going to stand as a believer, as one that is justified, as one that is clean before God because of what Jesus did. We are still going to stand before God on a judgment day, and he's going to reward us based off of what we did in the body, basically how we, did we live a life that glorified God. So here we are in 1 Corinthians um, chapter 3. According to the grace of God which was given to me, like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation and another is building on it. Okay, so when the Bible talks about building, it's talking about our lives, okay? All of us. Paul was a, a wise master builder. He was building into the lives of the saints. We all are builders. 
And we're going to see there's three types of builders that we're going to see in this text today. But we're all building something. We're building something in our life. Paul was a wise master builder. Um, I underline this phrase, according to the grace of God. I just want you to consider this, and that's this, that all of you and me have been given special gifts from God to be able to build up the church and to be able to reach the lost. Every one of us. Okay. We talked about this a couple weeks ago at a leadership study that I'm going through. And it was funny when I was asked the question, what do you think your strengths are? I was kind of half-hearted in my answer. Kind of, well, maybe it's this, but then again, you know, I don't have him really, really doing that much in that area. <laughs> you know, it's kind of real, not real enthusiastic. Um, I want to, and as I kind of sorted through that, well, why am I not really enthusiastic about this? I, I really think that I, I needed to spend some more time just reflecting on the grace of God and the goodness of God and, and the forgiveness that there is in Christ. And from that perspective, like what I was screaming about last week, is, is the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. And it teaches us to say no to ungodliness. So from a position of being cleansed with God, from a right perspective, and maybe there are some things in our lives that, well, what has God given me for a gift? Maybe were there some things that we're guilty, that we feel guilty about that is hindering us. Maybe it has something to do with uh, past sins, or maybe it's where our kids are at in the Lord, or maybe um, it's uh, a... Um, a sin that keeps creep, creeping its, its head into our lives and we give into it. Um, God wants us to take that to the cross and really see, see Jesus and be at his feet because that is the foundation upon which we make a real impact in this life. So according to the grace of God, according to the, the strength that God gives me, according to the gifts that he's given me, what is, your, what is your gift? What is it that you can do for this church to help build the church? What is it that you can do? We got to bring it home. We got to bring it home about what we do. We talk a lot about working on our weaknesses. The Bible talks a lot about working on our strengths. I'll share with you what I think some of my strengths are. It's humbling to do that. I mean, it really is because it just is, you know. Um, um, I think God has given me, it's a, a God-given desire to try to encourage the body to get closer to God. It's a very simple thing. That's, that's a gift, I think, from God. So when I talk to people, I ask them, it's on my heart always. And are you connecting, are you spending time in the Word? You know, and that's something I'll ask. Because I know they can't grow unless they are, you know. So that's something that I can use. Boy, if us as a body, we can all be in touch with what you think God could use in you. I shared Philemon 1, 7 with a brother yesterday. And the Apostle Paul was talking to Philemon. And he said, you brother, you brother have encouraged the hearts of the saints. And this brother has. And this brother's Alex. I don't care if he's embarrassed or not. He can, <laughs> sorry, Alex. He'll, he'll get me later. But why did I share that with him? I said, I want you to realize 
that you're a best you're, that you're a blessing. This is a gift from God. Fan into flame that gift and use it for God's glory, right? And now you think about that. We're talking about the judgment seat where God where God is going to reward us for this life. And we're going to see later, this scripture is pretty, pretty good in Corinthians here where it talks about kind of what happens there. But just think about your strengths. But each man must be careful how he builds on it. I want to pause there to, to just chat about that a little bit. Each man must be careful how he builds his life. Each one of us must be full of care about our walk with Jesus Christ. That we're just consumed with care. We're, that, that is what we're about. Are you full of care for your walk? With God, I see pictures of people, they're in the building process of building their home. It's a big deal. And you see a picture go up, here's the foundation, you know, here's, you know, here's the walls went up, and every step of the way. And, and it's a big job, and praise the Lord, God provides a house. But we see the pictures of every thing that goes up, maybe uh, posted on Facebook, but are we excited about what God is building in our lives? And is that more exciting than that shiny new house? It should be of the utmost importance to us. Our walk, the life that we're building. We should be full of care. You know, I, I think of the foundation Jesus Christ is the foundation. I heard the gospel that Jesus Christ loved me and died for me at a very young age, and I, at the age of 12. And for eight years, I, in a sense, fought that, but I delayed it for sure. And at the age of 20, I came to Christ, and I went back to, up to UW, Wisconsin, Platteville, and I ran into, I don't think John Wanschneider is here, ran into John Wanschneider, a brother, and I said, hey, John, I surrendered. And you surrendered to what? And I said, to the Lord, you know, and I started fellowshipping with those guys, okay? Um, I started hanging out with those guys. And let me tell you something about that experience. Um, it was really different from what I had been doing, okay? I had a couple of, I don't know, maybe three goals and probably two goals in college. One is I wanted to party and all of the flood of dissipation that goes with that. And two, I wanted to graduate. Though, th those, don't, those don't always go together real well. You know, uh, th by the grace of God, I did graduate, I think, because I got saved halfway through it. But, but those were my goals. So now I get saved and you just think about this. You know, I'm, I'm on this campus that, you know, I'm just living for the weekend, living for the night, you know, and living for the party, and I'm saved. And Jesus is now central. And I got these friends that are completely different than me. In walks this Jack Redman guy. He's got his guitar on him. Vietnam vet. <laughs> I mean, him and I had absolutely nothing in common, except for now we had absolutely everything in common, and that was Jesus, that was Jesus Christ. That was a walk, and here was a guy, you know, that's, that's coming up, traveling up to, to, to invest in just a handful of students to invest his life, to build his life into us. And we were a ragtag bunch, believe me. Let me tell you a few things that, that they taught me. A few things that I recall. So we talk about building a life and our foundation, right? 
And maybe some of us Christians don't know this or haven't lived this or haven't experienced this. This is a few things that were, that were impressed upon me. One is that we are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. We are his representative. We are Jesus Christ's representative on earth. If we don't rep him, no one will. That is a glorious thing. Two, Christianity, these are just recollections, these are just kind of thinking of how we approached it, okay? And we approached it extremely imperfectly. And there was many sins and problems and issues and people problems that came up in the midst of it, but this is how we approached it. That this is not a hobby. Christianity is not a hobby. It's not something that we do part-time. This is our life. This is who we are. This is our very substance. That we are saved to make a difference. That we are saved. Your, 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 our purpose is not just to get that job because we're in college and everybody's going for it, right? Or maybe those that aren't career-oriented, maybe pleasure-oriented. That is not, our, our calling is a lot higher. It's a lot different. It's a lot bigger. We are saved to make a difference. What else was built into me? You have a quiet time daily. That's something you do. That wasn't like, hey, you know, for you, you know, type A Christians that are pretty energetic, you should really spend time with God. Uh-uh. It was expected who I hung, from the people that I hung out with that every day you didn't have to, you got to, you spent time in the Word of God. That was just the standard. That is the standard. Okay, this last week, seven days, if you don't know that you are to spend time with God, you, you know now. It really should be, the, if you miss, you're not condemned, but the, you, every day, you spend time with God to be fed by God so you can build the proper life that you need to. That was expected. It was expected that we pray for the lost. It was expected that we pray for each other. It was expected that our new best friends, our best friends, were our, these ragtag group of believers that we may, on the world, from the world's perspective, have nothing in common with. Those are our best friends because they're our friends in the faith. So it's a standard. We had big struggles at times. Sin issues that came up. We fought through. Some of them took wrong turns. Others didn't. But you keep fighting for the glory of God. You build a life. You don't want, we don't want to lose our rewards. We build a life. We're builders. We're architects. That someday God's going to say, well, well done. Well done. I don't think it's sinful to want an attaboy. We give them very rarely where I work. <laughs> very rarely. I'll tell you what. I, I, it's pretty, hey, good job. You know what? That doesn't make me do less work or rest on my laurels when somebody says, nice work. But to stand before Jesus, do you get this? This is going to be reality. Jesus will have praise for us. Or not. Depending on what we do on earth and what we do with the grace of God. Thank you, Jack, for your service, your friendship over the years. Those are some good times we had, weren't they? 
some hard times, and we continue by the grace of God until we drop. Praise the Lord. I hope we all continue together if we've taken a wrong turn, if our priorities are out of balance. Repentance is a good thing. Some pretty good texts here. 1 Corinthians 3, 12. Now if any man builds on the foundation, the foundation, remember, is grace, it's Jesus Christ, it's our forgiveness, it's his goodness. You think about Jesus, our foundation. I just wanted to, I just wrote a real quick thought here. Our foundation is Jesus Christ. Think about him. He is the creator. He creates life. He is a sustainer. If he were to withdraw his breath, literally the world would collapse. <laughs> he is the, he was prophesied about. He was the object of the Old Testament. His death was. He is He was crucified in the New Testament. He lived a sinless life. He was resurrected. And he will return. And he will rule forever. That's Jesus. That's a good good person to be aligned with. That's a good God to be aligned with. That's our foundation. Now if any man builds on our foundation, grace, Jesus, his ways, with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and straw, each man's work will become evident. For the day will show it because it is to be revealed with fire. And the fire itself, this word really struck me, will test the quality of each man's work. So let me pause here to look at the first verse in this slide, verse 12. We see gold, silver, and precious stone. When fire, the fire of God's judgment Remember, this is a positive judgment. We see this in Scripture. You're going to see this more today. This is, this is meant where, where, where God wants to, he wants to bless us and praise us. But he also is real about it. He's also going to, he's, he's, he's real about it. I mean, either the life was fruitful or unfruitful. We're going to see that. He's an honest God. He's a just God. He's a fair God. He's not going to, well, you know, praise you for squandering your life. He's not going to give us praise for that. We're going to see we'll be saved, but as, a, as though through fire. But we see the first three, gold, silver, and precious stones, they can withstand the heat. And these are about what we have built, what we have, what we've invested in. And what we built our life upon. The things that we're focusing on, will they last? Will they be, will they make it through the fire? You think about gold and silver specifically. If they go through the fire, they're actually refined, right? (laughs) They actually, the quality becomes actually better. So they're not going to be destroyed, I I do believe. And we'll we'll let God judge. I do believe that, uh, I know Jack's motives when he came up to our, campus and were investing in us and it was a very unglamorous ministry that 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 is the type of investment that God calls us to we know that because God talks about building into men and women in his word so we can we can bank on that each man's work will become evident for the day will show it because it is to be revealed with fire, and the fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. Quality. 
How is the quality? I'm not talking about quantity of your work right now. How is the quality of of your relationship with Jesus Christ right now? I remember when I was first saved and I'm going to a conference and I remember sitting, John Weinschneider was driving that old 72 Chevy of his that he borrowed everybody under the sun and lasted for a million years, I think. And, and I remember him meditating through a verse with me. He goes, here, here, Brian, here's how you meditate through a verse. And he said, four. God so loved the world. For, for God. It was God that so loved the world. That he gave. And we were meditating through every section of the scripture. You say, no, this is what you do with every verse. You take the time to ingest the word of God into your heart. And it changes you. How would you describe the quality of your time with God this week? Was it quality time? We're going to be judged based off of the quality of our work. So then we, we think about these major areas of our life. I am called, as Pastor Jack is, the pastor. I'm called to do a quality job with that. You have certain gifts that you have and maybe undiscovered because either A, you're just not aware of them, or you're just not engaged enough in the game. But it starts with our relationship with God. So you think about quality. So we want to affect some change, right? Let's just start, where would we start? Right with our relationship with God. If you're too busy to have a quality time with God, you're just, you're too busy then. And actually, if you were to sit down with somebody that has a pretty good reasoner, probably shoot a lot of holes in your argument. Because you could, <laughs> you could find the time. God, God calls us to have a quality relationship with him, so then does he not provide us the time to do so? He absolutely does no matter how busy we are. He provides it. So we focus on that. I'm thankful that John took the time to show me how to meditate on the Word of God. And I used to have these verse cards, not known for my organization. You know, I would show up at a Bible study, open up my notebook, and verse cards would spill out all over the place because what he had planted, this idea that the Lord says he will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast, him whose mind is stayed on you. He will keep in perfect peace. That just blew me away. And I took it, what he invested in me, and I ran with it, and I started memorizing these verses that have been, that I use to this day, which were 30 years ago. But we've got to slow down. We've got to slow down, and we've got to make a proper evaluation of what we're doing. So we spend quality time with God. And then we evaluate the other areas of our life we say, okay, my relationship with God is huge. And then if we say, all right, I'm married and I have kids, that's huge. What am I, in, what am I by my example, what am I telling my kids that God is? By my example, what am I telling my kids that, that zeal is? 
is. What am I telling my spouse that zeal for God is? Quality. I'm exposed in this. I'm convicted by it. God used that word quality to convict me. Brian, you need to slow down in many areas of your life and you need to invest. There's no greater investment than the basic things that we have in our life. Your family, your spouse, invest in them. What does the Word of God say about our relationship with God? What does the Word of God say about how we should interface, how we should communicate with our family? You answer that. You, you find out. You dig in. It's going to take some work. There's this false understanding that says that we're saved by grace, that everything should kind of float to us. It's false. Now look at the Apostle Paul. He was a laborer. He had many sleepless nights. He had many frustrations. It does not just float to us. But this is key here. We, when we talk about our foundation, that we have the grace of God, the, 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 the feet of Jesus that were pierced, his hands that were nailed, his body that was beat unrecognizable on the cross for love for you that is resurrected in power and in glory, ready to empower you to work. That's, that's grace. And then we work. And we put effort into it by grace, by his power. It's a relationship with God, our family, the church. Church is a huge deal for God. you know that? It's his bride. We're going to see that. I'm probably going to, I'm not going to get as far as I thought I was this week. We might, are going to see that next week. The church is God's, is the bride of Jesus. The word of God has strong words to say about those that do damage to God's church. And right in this context, you're going to see it. He is in love with his church. It is the pillar and the foundation of the truth. The gates of hell will not, cannot stand against it. And the church, this local church, should be important to you. And that means the people in it, extremely important. Yeah, but that's talking about the church universal. Well, it is, but you know what? Nobody goes to the church universal. You go to the local church where there's people that you know or maybe you don't know and you invest in them. So what is the quality of your work in the local church. So encouraging, you know, we had our, our meeting. I wish Peggy was in here. You know, Peggy never gets up in front of people. I mean, so we have a meeting about this open house, and Peggy's leading it. And this is really kind of funny, because, I mean, I don't remember when Peggy has ever really spoken. I'm sure she has, but she's a behind-the-scenes humble servant, right? 
So we meet downstairs, and, and the basement's just full. People working together. I can't tell you how encouraging that was. That was so encouraging. And just to see people taking ownership, not the, I wouldn't care, honestly, if you know, everything fell in half during, the, during the, what we were trying to do. It wasn't a performance, but it was just the unity and the working together. And all of a sudden we're talking, and all of a sudden I, I see Tucker over here kind of pulls a few guys together and say, listen, this is what we got to do to get these grounds in order. And he just takes control of it. It hasn't been that long with us. Very encouraging to me. I'm like, wow. We can't manage it all. We don't want, we can't. We can't do it all. We don't want to because we're a body. The church, your church is not an insignificant thing. It is absolutely enormous. I had a good friend of mine that I sit through, that I sit through football games with. He goes out to the Galena church. Good man. Actually, Hannah babysat for him, I learned. <laughs> When he was little, and we were both, we both, he, one thing I've learned about him, he just loves working with his local church, and he just, we both share one thing in common. We're just baffled when people will just so quickly move, quickly move on. I'm not judging anybody for doing that. I'm not. But what I am saying is let's be committed to each other. Let's be committed to each other. Let's understand, you look up, you do this. I've challenged many people to do this. You pull up a Bible software program and you type in the word church and you study it and you meditate through it and God will change your conviction of this glorious body who God loves and died for and, and wants to work through until he returns. Very, very, very very important. So I think of the quality of work in our relationship with God, the quality of work in our families. We're just getting real basic here. Just nothing, no crazy doctrine here. We're just getting down home, the quality of work in our church, the quality of work at our job. You know, as we were singing here at his feet today, I was thinking about my job. And I thought, you know, I can sit at the feet of Jesus while I'm doing my job at work. A very fast-paced commission, rat race type of job. I can sit at his feet. You want to know why? Because that's who I work for. That's who I report to. I report to Jesus. Jesus, you understand? I'm going to sit at your feet here, and I'm going to work for you and for your glory, not for the check, not for the advancement. You will advance me if you choose to advance me. You will compensate me how you choose to compensate me but I will work at your feet. And suddenly, those eight hours of work become not an exclusion to our relationship with God, but a very significant part of it. So we walk with God from our first breath till we go to bed at night. We walk with God. And I think of our neighbors, the quality of our work with our neighbors. Very basic. Relationship with God. What are we doing with our family? What are we doing with our church? I'm going to stop there. And I'm going to go on next week. Because I don't want to rush it. Let's pray. Father, I, I do thank you, God, for the opportunity that you've given us 
to live a life that will be praised and rewarded from you. God, we were created by grace. You didn't have to create. Lord, you, we were saved by grace. Lord, you didn't have to save us. And we, Lord, are your workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. God, give us the strength, the humility, the commitment, the work ethic, and the action to do it. Amen.